geometric mean. So, what is a geometric mean? So, geometric mean, so similar with the idea under arithmetic mean. So, this is a term or could be terms that are fusion between of the terms of a geometric sequence. And whenever that we are looking for a geometric mean of a given sequence, we may use the formula the square root of a sub 1 times a sub n. So keep in mind that we are only to use this formula if we are going to look for a single geometric mean or if we are to insert a single geometric mean. So for example, find the geometric mean between 2 and 18. So dealing with these two numbers, so we are to find or insert a single geometric mean. So for us to do that, let us use the formula the square root of a sub 1 times a sub n. So what is a sub 1? So as we all know, a sub 1 means the first term. And the first term from our given sequence is the number 2. So it will be multiplied to our last term and our last term is said to be 18. So getting the product of these two, so we will have now our geometric mean equal to the square root of 2 times 18. Then simplifying this, we will have now the square root of 36. And getting the square root of 36, we all know that it could be a positive or a negative 6. So therefore, this will be our geometric mean. It could be positive 6 or it could be negative 6. So meaning, our sequence could be 2, 6, then 18, or it could be 2, negative 6, 18. So any of these two values can be our geometric mean. Still, this is a geometric sequence. Another example. Find the geometric mean between negative 3 and negative 75. So again, with these two numbers, so we are just only asked to look for a single geometric mean. So we will use the same formula. So getting the square root of the first term times the second term. So our first term has a value of negative 3 while our last term has a value of negative 75. So, writing this, this will give us the square root of negative 3 times negative 75. And getting the product between these two, so we will have now the square root of 225. And again, getting the square root of 225, so that will give us a positive and a negative value. So, positive and negative 15. So, which means this is our, now, our geometric mean. So, this means that our sequence could be negative 3, positive 15, then negative 75. Or, our sequence could be negative 3, but we do have negative 15, then negative 75. So, any of these two could be our geometric mean to be inserted. Still, this will create a geometric sequence. Okay? Now, if you are to look for more than one geometric means, you must first unlock the common ratio of the given sequence and then use it to continue the progression of the given sequence until you manage to insert all required number of geometric means. So what do I mean with this one? So let us have this one. Insert 6 geometric means between 3 and negative 384. So first thing, we need to visualize our sequence. So 3 is our first term and negative 384 is our last term and we are to insert 6 geometric means between these two. So in order for us to do that, what we need to do first is to find the common ratio. And to find the common ratio, we may use this formula. So R raised to n minus 1 equals a sub n divided by a sub 1. So this is not a new formula. This is just only a formula that was derived from the formula under geometric sequence. Okay, so nothing is new with this one. So let us now start extracting those informations and substitute it to our formula. So we need to find the value of r. So our r remains unknown. So our n means the number of terms. So how many terms do we have on our sequence? So let us count. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8. So we do have 8 terms present on our sequence. So therefore, our n is said to be 8. Okay? Then minus 1 equals to our a sub n. a sub n means the last term. And our last term is obviously negative 384. Then b divided by our first term. And our first term is number 3. So, rewriting our equation, so what we'll have now is 
r raised to 8 minus 1 equals negative 384 divided by 3. So, next thing we do after substituting, of course, we simplify. So, we simplify our exponent. Then, we simplify this part as well to wherein we're going to divide. So, r raised to 8 minus 1 and 8 minus 1, we all know that the answer is 7, giving us the equation of r raised to 7. Then, equals to negative 128. So, that came from the quotient of negative 384 divided by 3. So, the next thing that we need to do, so since our r is accompanied by exponent of 7, so we need to do extraction of roots. So, here we will be extracting the roots of both sides based on the exponent of our r. So, we're going to have the 7th root. So, the 7th root of r is to 7 and the 7th root of negative 128. So, upon computing, so we will be canceling out this one. So, that makes our r now left on our left side alone, then making it equal to the 7th root of negative 128 to wherein the answer is negative 2. Okay? So, what will be the function of this negative 2? So, this negative 2, we will be used to be multiplied to the first term, then doing it continuously until we manage to fill out all of those required number of arithmetic means. So, negative 2 times positive 3, so we will obtain negative 6. Then, negative 2 times negative 6, so we will see that the answer is set to be 12. Then, again, negative 2 times positive 12, so that will give us negative 24. Times negative 2 again, that will give us positive 48. Times negative 2 again, that will give us negative 96. Then, times negative 2 again, that will give us 192. Then, to double check it, if it is really correct, so continuous multiplying, so negative 2 times 192 so it will go exactly to our last term which is negative 384 so meaning our inserted arithmetic means are correct so this is how we insert those multiple number of arithmetic geometric means rather let's ha let us have another example insert three geometric means between 9 and 1 over 9 so first thing we need to visualize our problem so, we are asked to insert three geometric means between these two. So, we will have this. So, so, the next thing that we need to do is to find the common ratio. So, again, we are to use this formula. R raised to n minus 1 equals a sub n divided by a sub 1. So, we need to find the value of R. So, R is the one that is unknown to this equation. But we do know the value of n. n means the number of terms. And the number of terms that we do have right now is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we do have 5 terms. So, meaning our n now becomes 5. Then, minus 1 equals a sub n. a sub n means the last term and our last term is 1 over 9. Then, divided by our first term, our first term from the sequence is 9. Then writing our equation, so what we will be dealing now is r raised to 5 minus 1 equals 1 over 9 divided by 9. So, we simplify the exponent on the left side. And we simplify the right side of the equation at the same time. So, therefore, giving us the equation now transform into r raised to 4 equals 1 over 81. So, this time, so we need to extract the roots of our equation on both sides. So, since we will be dealing with the 4 as our exponent under r, so we will have now the fourth root. So, we will be using the fourth root on both sides of the equation. So, this is to cancel out the exponent of our r, so making it just only r. Okay, then equal to the fourth root of 1 over 81, so upon computing, this will give us a positive and negative 1 over 3. So, keep in mind that whenever that you are getting a root of a number, and the index of your root is an even number, so it always results to two possible uh, numbers. So, just like the square root, the fourth root, the sixth root. So, they will always result to two possible numbers. But, just only one possible number if the index of the root that you are using is just only an odd number. Just like the third root or the cube root, the fifth root, and the seventh root. Okay, so I hope that is clear. And that is the reason why we do have two possible value of the common ratio. Okay, so just like what we did on the previous one, so we will be using this and multiply it to our first term for us to obtain those geometric means but unlike the previous one so we will have two possibilities of geometric means to be inserted because we will be de dealing with these two 
possible common ratio. So, first, let us deal with the positive value of the common ratio, which is 1 over 3. So, upon multiplying 1 over 3 to our 9, so that will give us positive 3. Then, multiplying it again by positive 1 over 3, so this will give us 1. Then, multiplying it again by 1 over 3, this will give us 1 over 3. Then, multiplying it continuously, so it will give us 1 over 9, which is our last term. Now, let us deal with another possibility. This time, let us use negative 1 over 3. So, if we will be using negative 1 over 3 as our common ratio, so 9 times negative 1 over 3, so this will give us negative 3. Then, negative 3 times negative 1 over 3, this will give us 1. Then, 1 times negative 1 over 3, this will give us negative 1 over 3. Then, further multiplying it, so negative 1 over 3 times negative 1 over 3. So, it will go exactly to our last term again, which is positive 1 over 9. So, any of these two sets of geometric means that we have inserted are correct answers. So, both of these are correct. So, nothing is wrong. So, it is only a matter of giving the instruction if your teacher wants to have the principal root to be used or the negative root to be used. So, either way, you will have the correct answer. So, hope everything is clear in getting the geometric means, in getting a single geometric mean, or getting multiple number of geometric means. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you learned something from this session of ours. See you next time. Thank you for watching.